was an evangelical Christian in an evangelical Bible college, and I was single. So I received a lot of dating advice that I never asked for. As a kid, if you want to be in the in-group, maybe you need to have cool clothes, cool sneakers, or wear two sets of sunglasses at once. I don't know. I was never a cool kid. But as a young evangelical adult, you need to be married to be in the cool group. And I want to get married. Again, I'm only 27. What am I, a child bride? And once you were that cool young married person, no matter how long you had been married, you are now a relationship expert. And you will be more than happy to share your brilliant insights whenever and wherever you can. And secondly, I know you're the big marriage expert. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Your wife is dead. <laughs> Hey everybody, thank you so much for liking and subscribing and commenting and all the other wonderful stuff you do because you're wonderful people. I put the links down below for the social media as well as the Patreon and the merchandise. So uh, click down there, have some fun. Um, hey, we're going to talk about dating. We're going to talk about being real cool on that date, have a lot of fun on that date. And one thing that make you look really cool is having a cool wallet. And nothing's worse than taking that wallet out and it's a Costanza wallet and it's this giant thing and you look like a, a doofus. You won't look like a doofus if you got this. I've partnered with Extra on this video and I love their wallets. This is the Parliament here. It's the Parliament wallet. Look at this. Okay, so we got this and then we got my phone next to it. Look how sleek and cool it is. Uh, smaller than my phone. You can open it up. Do you do wallet? You put your dollar dollar bills in there. And uh, look at this. Oh, there. Yeah, I'll pay for that. Look at that. Um, uh, yeah, I'll pay for that. Cha cha. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Put extra cards in there. Put extra cards in there. And uh, six colors. I got the black one. But look at this. What is this in the back here? Credit card size thing right here. Well, that is a tracker. I'm always losing things, so this is really cool that it has this little tracker that sticks in there. And you got right here. You know what that is? That is a solar panel. So you don't have to worry about changing that battery. A solar panel tracking device lets you track your wallet's location from your phone, use the two-way ringing feature, or receive separate alerts. Two hours in the sun equals a three-month charge. That is awesome. Half the size of conventional wallets carries 12 cards and cash. Boop, 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 boop. It's environmentally friendly and sustainable. Vegan Italian leather. Or you can do it with space grade aluminum, but this also has built in RFID blocking, which protects you from data theft and wireless skimming. They have a lot of really cool products on their website. Go check it out. And with my code, believe it or not, when you go to partners.exter.com slash believe it or not, you get an additional additional 5% off the 50% Black Friday sales that are going on right now. So you get, because you're watching this guy right now, you get 55% off. And that's actually a pretty cool thing. Because I really do believe that relationships are being defined more by pop culture and what the world says than what the word of God says. Oh yeah, of course. First and foremost, you have to go by what the Word of God says about marriage. If you can't get your 100-year-old wife who's also your sister pregnant, impregnate a servant. Have as many wives as you want. And concubines. If you have been sexually assaulted while being a virgin, you get to marry that guy. If your brother dies without having any sons, well then you marry his wife and you give him a son. If you want to meet a nice woman, Take a prisoner of war and make her marry you. And if you really like someone and want to marry them, make sure you present her father with the foreskins of 200 of his enemies. Biblical marriage. Really, when it comes to biblical marriage, they're just taking random passages from the Bible and doing their own thing with it. Mostly, though, it's Adam and Eve. The longing to pair off with somebody is a good thing. I think God designed us to be that way. You know, we want companions. We want partners. Adam felt that. Um, he wanted a partner, and so God created animals 
for him to spend his time with and have somebody to be with. But Adam's like, hey, this is cool and all, you know, like hanging out with rhinos, but I would rather have someone more like me that I can talk to. I love how God has no forethought here and no knowledge of how biology works. Sure, Adam will find an animal that he can breed with. So then God created Eve and Adam's response was at last. You know that Adam actually had no other options? There was nobody else around. It's not like Adam could go to Mars and find somebody there. There was nobody around. Adam should have settled for a monkey. Wait a minute. Is he implying that monkeys are biologically related to us? Because nobody else was around. Instead of Adam came back to God with his head and said, God, I looked everywhere. I found something that you could work on. But um, I decided that I don't want to bring you someone to work on. I want you to bring someone to me you've been working on. Don't ooh and ah at that story. He just made it up. Like it's already from a made up story in the Bible, but then he made more up. It's not anything. Before God brings you an Eve, devil will offer you a monkey. What does that even mean? Come on, let's go preaching right there. Somebody say amen. Before God brings you an Eve. See, I want you to watch this. God didn't go and put Adam to sleep right away and say, hey, here is your wife. God actually sends him to search because he wants the generation after Adam to know that before God brings someone to you, you are will be tempted to bring someone to God for God to fix. Okay, and God can't fix people? Isn't his whole thing fixing broken people? And now I've been around guys who are like pretty much obs obsessed with me. They are, you know, I'm basically like the most important thing in their entire world. And you know what? Honestly, it is kind of flattering. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's who doesn't like a guy giving you like so much attention mm -hmm. and just basically treating you like you're the queen of the entire world. I mean, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> and of course, it's not wrong to be loved and cherished. Yeah. But we're talking about a guy who is literally obsessed with you. Like you are even more important than God. Oh no, not more than God. You basically, as the girl, become the God of his life. And that is an idol that is totally out of order. God needs to be the most important person in his life. So if you are around a Mr. Obsessed and you can tell that you are the most important person in his life, I would really caution you because this is someone that I would not date, court, or marry, despite how flattering yeah. it may seem. So I would just encourage you to be very careful around a Mr. Obsessed. The funny thing is in this world, in this evangelical world, relationships and finding the right person is considered to be one of the most important things you can do. Your worth is tied to your relationship status. So I don't see why it would be any surprise that someone in this world would put too much stock in a relationship. It's so important in the subculture that you find somebody and get married. You are constantly made to believe that your life doesn't really start until you get married. So it makes sense that people might get a little obsessive. I'm not saying being a weirdo is okay by any means. I'm just saying you're also promoting the subculture that makes people into weirdos. But they really try to emphasize that the most important thing to do is to love God first and then it is okay to love somebody else important thing to look for when you're looking for someone to date as a Christian would be someone who is chasing the same cause as you, which would be someone running towards Jesus because you're running towards Jesus. So you don't want to be running towards Jesus and your mates running off that way and you're trying to drag mm. them back with you. You want to be running in the same direction. Absolutely. And I have experienced this firsthand. You know, when you meet a girl or a boy or a guy or whatever, you may think that, oh, well, they're not a Christian, but maybe, I make yeah, I can make them a Christian. I know they have a <laughs> sweetheart. They, they're a Christian, they just don't know it yet kind of thing. It's just crazy to see that when two people's souls don't align, that it creates way more just tension and difficulty than you could ever imagine. Because they really think that if you don't love God, then it is impossible to love others despite everyone who hasn't been brainwashed into their way of thinking, seeing how often a love for God can make you do some very unloving things towards people.
Number six is Mr. Unsaved. Now this is the type of guy. He's cute. He's gentlemanly. He's mm, nice. He charming. brings you gifts. <laughs> he is just like the package uh -huh. deal. Except one problem. He's not a Christian. He is Mr. Unsaved. Yeah. And now, girls, I don't care how cute he is. I don't care if he is literally like the hottest thing that you've ever seen in your entire <laughs> life with the best muscles, whatever it is, you are just like dropping dead in his presence. If he is not a Christian, the Bible makes it very mm -hmm. clear that you should not mm -hmm. marry him. So this is not like a, well, maybe, I mean, but he's really nice. I mean, but what if he comes to church with me? No. If this mm -hmm. guy is not a Christian, if he is a Mr. Unsaved, there is no compromising mm -hmm. here. This is an automatic no and the bible makes that very very clear part of me does get this i think it would be a struggle for me to date somebody who was religious but on the other hand if i met somebody and there was a connection and they weren't the bigoted type of religious person then then who knows M maybe i could definitely couldn't date somebody who believed in ghosts though so i get wanting to date somebody who sees the world in a similar way but again it totally depends on the person and sometimes you can work things out if I met somebody and I fell in love with them, and they're the type of person who likes running marathons, good for her. I'll support her in that. But if I met someone who liked running marathons and also wanted me to run marathons with her, that would be a different story. I don't have the proper footwear. But for evangelicals, they know that because of facts and evidence working against them, if you spend too much time with a non-believer, you have a higher chance of becoming a non-believer yourself. So you got to make sure that you are not unequally yoked. They must be a Christian slash believer. Is that one of yours? I have more, a lot more to say than that. I know. I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> but I'm saying is that one of yours? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they hate each other so much. Oh, it is. Okay. You know, this may be, may or may not be obvious to some of you guys, but I have lived and seen what happens to a couple that are not equally yoked you know the bible even calls us and instructs us to be equally yoked but um, i have a family member who was married to a non-believer and it ended disastrously and the repercussions that they are having to go through for the rest of their life is unbelievable all because they didn't align on this major point and i've seen many believers who were married to other believers that also had their marriage end disastrously but it's not just that they need somebody who is a christian but they need to find the right kind of christian i encourage even for people not in the area of faith to be compatible only in that we're a christian well christian today means so much Mormon calls themselves Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses calls themselves Christian. I go as further as to say, if you want to avoid problems, mm -hmm. be compatible in your doctrinal beliefs. Yes, that's good. If you're a Baptist lady and you are connecting with a charismatic, all right, that's not being compatible. Both of you are going to fight over tongues. You're going to be you know, fighting in English over whether you should be not speaking in English and stuff. So no need for that. Just yeah. save yourself from a headache. Yeah. Go fish in the denominational pool of your convictions and doctrinal yeah. Yeah. preferences and beliefs. All right, my next one is, he was ready and willing to be the sole provider of our house so that I could be a stay-at-home mom full-time. Wow. So no <laughs> feminism going on in this household. No. Except feminism doesn't say that you can't be a stay-at-home parent. It just says that you should be able to choose what you want to do. If you choose to be a stay-at-home parent, that is fine. And it seems like Morgan had that choice. So yes, like it or not, that's feminism. Look to the intern on your left. Now to your right. One of you will do exceedingly well in business. Just unlimited potential. One of you will make a living. And nothing more. And one of you will make a great mother. It's up to you to choose which you want to be. I did not, the thought of meeting a guy and him telling me like, yeah, I want you to work for, you know, at least 10 years, 15 years, like whatever. And then we can discuss like, no, I wanted him to be like, hey, as soon as we have kids, you're 
going to be at home with the kids and I will be the provider. Like I wanted him to tell me that and desire that because that's what I deeply desired and wanted and thought it was so important for me to be a stay-at-home mom. But this is what we call privilege. We live in a world where a lot of people are struggling financially. We are in a housing crisis, groceries and gas prices are through the roof, people aren't getting paid what they need to survive. People are out here fighting for a living wage. Not for wages that make them rich, not for wages that make it so that they can have enjoyment in their life or freedoms in their lives or the ability to travel, but wages that allow them to live, to survive. People are fighting for that. For a lot of people, this non-negotiable you have, this standard you are setting is just not feasible. And for a lot of people, they date or they get married based on more than just money. But I also grew up dirt poor, so I might have a different perspective. So I would say that one would be a little bit more of a gray area. And you admitted yes. like yes. this is something very specific to you. Yes. Because I could see some women saying like, oh, I, I want to have even come on, like I want to have at least a part-time job. I want to be at least mm -hmm. maybe working from home yeah. on some level. So, yes. but yeah, no, I respect that. Again, this is speaking from a place of privilege. Most people don't have jobs because they want a job. They have jobs because they want to have food inside their body and a roof over their head. They want to be able to take care of their children. It's not just for funsies or to have something to do or you know seeing each other that you can't you know express your feelings because most likely you won't start a relationship like that but it's just the emphasis in on the spiritual first so you're building your faith then the emphasis go in into more of a social where you're building the friendship the friendships mm -hmm. the friendship aspect of it activities you're sharing different activities not nudes <laughs> but activities and here's the thing it'll give us so much extra space in our room to do activities please Okay, you're sharing your um, things that you do together. Maybe foods. <laughs> foods, yeah. You, you share different things. You go on hikes and you go in the company of your family and you, you do things that are, that are fun activities. Look at all this floor oh. space. So Look much. robots in here. So many activities. And then comes the emotional side where you really begin to express your emotions. And that, when the level of commitment begins to go up, especially with, you know, engagement, this is when the feelings really have to take root, where people have to express their feelings, learn to express their feelings. And then after they get married is where the physical begins. So, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying wait until you're engaged to be married before you express yourself emotionally ever? I don't know. That doesn't seem like a smart thing to do at all. But with these people, it's not about a connection. It's not about meeting someone and falling in love. It's about checklists. Do they hit everything on my checklist? Great. Now I'll date them and check that part off. Then we'll get engaged and we'll check that part off. And then we'll get married and we'll check that off. But I think we'll all enjoy ourselves more if we rigidly stick to the schedule. And I'm not saying don't have standards, don't analyze the relationship, do that, do that often. But also, you aren't building IKEA furniture, you're navigating a relationship. Is to date graciously, to be kind to one another, to treat each other like they're a daughter or a son of our king. You shouldn't have to picture someone's relationship to somebody else to know to treat them with respect and kindness. You see this when people talk about objectifying women and someone will say, that's somebody's daughter or that's somebody's mother. Maybe, maybe they are. But you know who else they are? Someone. Period. End of sentence. They are someone. You shouldn't have to imagine that they are God's princess to know to treat someone you are in a relationship with with kindness and grace. In Proverbs, it says that a gracious woman attains honor, and what is desirable in a man is his kindness. And I can think back on people that I've met before, like, you know, guys, they may not be the best looking or the smartest or the funniest or the most athletic or whatever, but if they're kind, girls are just like flocking to them. 
but you chose Nate? This guy? Yeah, that's another thing is to thank each other for things that may be expected of them, you know? I kind of expect her to make dinners and wash the clothes and stuff, but that doesn't mean I can't thank her for them. This guy. Yeah, she, we, we came up with a lot of things that I did that started fights, but I couldn't really think of. But I don't know, I don't really think that's because you didn't do anything wrong. I just think it's because I have a way of forgiving and forgetting. Oh, no. <laughs> and you like to keep a record book of everything that I ever did. No, I don't. What's something that you get mad at me for? Mm, not paying attention to Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that one makes you sound pretty bad. So, okay, so say she gets mad that I'm not, I don't even know if I can use those words, not paying attention to Because I feel like I'm always paying okay, attention to Okay, how about this? Not catering to his crying. Okay, so she wants me to cater his crying. So I will happily admit that I, um, I don't cater to all of his crying. And so rather figuring out who's right or wrong, should I cater to his crying or should I not? More importantly, when it really hurts her feelings that I don't cater to his crying, it's important to recognize <laughs> that her feelings were hurt. And there's no really debate on that, that her feelings were hurt. And that, that should be the focal point. What are you talking about? You were ignoring your own crying baby. Her feelings weren't hurt. She's worried that you suck as a dad. Quiet time with God, and I like to pray, and I like to read the Bible. And, for example, recently, as in yesterday, <laughs> Sutton wanted me to do something for her. She wanted me to make bo uh, lunch for the boys. <laughs> and I had plans to have quiet time with God, and I thought by doing that it was going to get in my way of having time to do that, so I told her no. And in the meantime, looking back on it is really silly because here I am wanting to have quiet time with God, but in the meantime, I'm not serving like I could have served. Sutton. You're not loving your wife like Christ loves the church. Yeah, so that's- That's not doing something for her. You are their dad. This is your responsibility. And I'm only commenting on how he is as a husband because they put out so much relationship advice and it's all so wrong and so dangerous. So myth number four, dating many people prepares you for marriage. The truth is dating many people requires you to break up with many people, That's true. which prepares you for a divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the concept that happens in our culture is that you have to, you know, you can't buy a car if you don't test drive it. So people, a lot of times they go into marry, into dating and they're like, well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm dating a lot to, um, uh, to just kind of figure out what I like and who I like and everything. Or they go into dating. They just want to try different people. The problem they is just that want to gain experience. the world has not, 7 billion yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Like you don't really have a lot of time to try every person. Number one, number two is that the more you the more you break up with the person, um, your heart becomes broken. But then second time you break up with somebody, it doesn't it doesn't hurt as much, and then it, it doesn't it. It, you become numb to it. And then when you get married, guess what happens? This habit that you've developed it doesn't just evaporate. The habit of realizing that you deserve love and it's okay to end a relationship that is causing you pain and hardship. You had a problem with the person, guess what you're going to do? You're going to do exactly what you've been trained to do. And so I'm not in any way saying that the only, that when you really have that person that you're in love with, that it always has to end up in marriage and it, there is no you know, room where something doesn't end up in marriage. But if we go with this approach where people date for fun, like I have this video that went viral on TikTok and on Instagram that if you want to have fun, you know, hike a mountain, if you want to have fun, get swimming lessons if you want to have fun you know go get a dog get a dog go and join a gym if you want to have yeah. fun join a local church if you want to have fun did it go viral because people were amazed that this grown man couldn't come up with one example of a fun experience swimming lessons what are you talking about guy doesn't even say laser tag don't use another person's heart for fun. There's a lot of other activities that you can do like painting, drawing, rollerblading, swimming, skydiving. I mean, there's so many things you can do that are fun with that doesn't involve playing with somebody's heart. It's okay to have fun with someone. 
It's okay to get to know someone and then realize that you aren't a match. You learn something from it. They learn something from it. You grow as people. That is okay. They approach this like the goal is to get a spouse, when really it's about getting to know someone, spending time with someone, and enjoying the moment. And if that leads to a relationship, that's awesome. If you decide to get married down the road, that's great. Good for you. If you realize that it's not going to work out and that hurts someone, unfortunately, that is part of life. But that doesn't mean it's wasted time. A target needs to be standing still. And if you're using culture as the barometer of what relationships should look like, that's a moving target. Has he heard of hunting before? Target practice is practicing for hunting which is why sometimes there are moving targets. And most of the time, when you are hunting, your target is moving. I mean, I've never gone hunting, but it just seems like that's how it works. Like, relationship says marriage looks like this in one decade, then it looks like this in another decade. It's, we're supposed to be like this, this is what dating, now we have Netflix and chill. You don't even have to be committed to anybody to cross the line into private areas. So what decade should we go back to then? When people had to stay married even when they were in an abusive relationship? When people couldn't marry someone who had a different skin color? I mean, I'm sure you wanna go back to when people couldn't marry their partner if they were the same sex. But I'm glad that we live in a world where we can change things and we can change definition because we learn and we grow as a society. To date when you are ready to get married. And we already mentioned that mm -hmm. marriage should be the goal of dating, not fun or not uh, you want to gain experience or whatever reason. Marriage must be the goal. And so when if you are not ready to mm -hmm. get married, either financially, emotionally, whatever reason, then please don't get a date. Yeah. So if, if somebody would come up to me and say, Vlad, when am I ready to date? I would ask them with this question. The same time you are ready for marriage. If you are ready for marriage, you are ready for dating. Now this was something so normal for me. I really thought that marriage was just like something you did. You got to a point in your life and you get married. Meanwhile, with my crippling social anxiety, if I have to find a new barber, then I'll go a year without getting a haircut. But yeah, I'm just going to find somebody to spend the rest of my life with. You got a job? Yeah. Have you had it for more than one week? Three years. Yeah. To live with your mom? Uh, no, I'm so proud to say that I own my own penthouse apartment. Are you dumb um, or are you smart? Well, that's a subjective question. Did you finish your 11? I've got a degree in finance. Cool, drop call my phone. Drop call my phone. 0770. Oh. Yeah. No. My first non-negotiable in Christian dating is they must be dating to marry and not be dating with no end game slash time frame. And I, I just can picture in my mind, you go to date somebody, maybe you met them online and they're just saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm dating casually mm -hmm. or, I, I, you know, I'm not sure when I'm going to get married to me. Mm mm. This is a non-negotiable. You talk with them, and, and uh -huh. granted, we had kind of a, we, we didn't do amazing in this area. You, I guess you didn't do amazing. Yeah. But all in all, so, so maybe I'm being, well, I think am I being pretty, hypocritical? Well, I think pretty quickly you recognize, okay, she is dating to marry. Like, she's not like, right, because if, know, if talking to five guys. And what we're saying is Morgan kind of on our first date was... <laughs> I asked him why I was on Tinder and he was like, well, I'm looking for a wife. And I started cracking up and I was like, oh, well, you're looking in the wrong place. And then he was like, well, I intend to get married very soon. And I was like, well, I don't. <laughs> if a month into our dating, it was clear like, oh, Morgan is, she does not see herself getting married in the next two years, three years. Mm -hmm. I would have been out. I'm just being honest. Like I would have been out. But like you said, once you kind of peeled <laughs> past the uh harder exterior yes it was like okay this woman really is yes i was like an onion i had many layers Ugh, i was being mean to nate but let's also remember that paul is a giant horse's ass he had no room for her timeline or her desires he was trying to find somebody who met his checklist convert them quickly to his checklist or move on to someone else you have many layers <laughs> yes 
<laughs> yeah, but guys, seriously, like that's that's a big one, and that so often leads to sexual compromise because you date, you do really love this person, they love you, but there's no intention of getting married in the next year. Yeah, there's no intention of who knows marriage. Sure, maybe, maybe, mm-hmm. and then it stretches on. You get more physical. You compromise. You lose your sexual purity. Five years go by, and suddenly you're like, what am I doing here? Yeah. I wanted to get married. I wanted to have a Christian dating relationship, and that's down the tubes. Yep. You guys get me. All right. All All right. right. We'll get more into this, but marriage isn't about sex. It is about way more than that. And when you are in this world, you are told that all the time, but it's not what happens practically. Because when the only possible way you can have any sexual outlet without feeling like you are now a dirty, rotten sinner is in the confines of marriage, you want to get married quickly and you don't really think about what kind of commitment that really is. My number one is if God speaks very clearly to you, like literally you hear his voice saying, date this person or I want you to pursue this person. And he can do that because it kind of happened with us like that, at least Mm -hmm. partially. Morgan. I audibly heard God's voice say, this is your husband, take care of him. And I was like, well, alrighty then. Thank you, God, for letting me know. So (laughs) praise the Lord when he does that because it's just like, wow, God, thank you. You just made it so easy. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't always do that. And I think an important thing to note, it's not a prerequisite that God speaks to you that clearly. I feel like it's pretty common to say, I'm waiting on the Lord to speak to me. Sometimes, and I think we're about to get to these in the next one or the next two, sometimes it's not that clear. But when it is that clear, accept it, say thank you, God, and go for it. Morgan's mental health has been a topic of discussion in many circles. Someone's mental well-being is not something to laugh about or to make fun of, but I have had times in my own life where I thought I was having a supernatural experience when that simply wasn't what was happening. I thought I saw an angel a few times, but it was actually the result of carbon monoxide poisoning. I thought I saw a demon once, but it was the result of sleep paralysis. When you are already expecting a supernatural experience and then you have an auditory hallucination... Of course you are going to think that is God. It's so dangerous to make a huge life decision based on something that could have just been a matter of talking to your doctor and having your medication adjusted. And again, I'm not trying to make fun of her. I am on meds too, and I know what they can do to you. But don't make a life decision. Don't date Paul because you heard a voice speaks to intentionality, right? The reason that we have long dating periods is because intentions are not clear. Intentions are not made early enough. Ladies, there is a statistic out there and I don't know the exact number, but I'm pretty sure it's men typically know if you are marriage material or if you are someone that they could see themselves being married to in by six months. So if you're in a relationship where you've been together for five years, four years, 10 years, ladies, the longer you stay in that is not going to convince him because he probably already knows or has an idea if you are someone that he wants to marry. And so let's cut all that long dating We had to be very intentional that if we were going to see if this was going to work, then let's set some boundaries. Let's be intentional and let's make a decision today. I think that's called like DTR, determine the relationship, Mm -hmm. something like that. Define, define, determine the relationship. We don't need long, long, long dating to decide if someone is for you, which now it's about finding someone to fill a role instead of a partner to navigate this life with. And I get it. There is so much pressure in this culture to partner off. I still have people in my family who make jokes every time I see them about me still being single. It's always the same people who think it's hilarious that I have jeans with holes in them. But you shouldn't make decisions based on social pressure. Marry someone when the two of you decide that it's the best option. But don't think you have to pair off. Don't think you have to get married. Don't think you have to go by other people's timelines. 
But what we are saying is in four months, if you're dating intentionally, if you're getting around that person, not just in a lovey-dovey, romantic, fun. All you do is go out on funsy dates and yeah, but talk you're, about fluff. Right, but you're actually getting to know them, being you know with their family, going out, maybe serving with them. If you're really getting to know somebody in four months. That's not long enough ago. You know their character. You know if they have a heart for God or not. But you know if they're they have a good work ethic, you know if they're disciplined, you know if they are loving, yeah. the big things you know. And so we're just, you know, standing by what we said, that it doesn't take that long to know if this person is who I want to marry or not. I mean, you can look at Morgan and I's personal experiences. Morgan, I know your experiences of dating were a little different than mine. I dated a girl before Morgan and we dated for four months. And at that time, I knew her well enough, learned you know, her strengths and weaknesses, she learned mine, and we decided the best thing to do was to not get married. And you know that was that. We didn't need to date for another year to come to that place. When I met Paul and we started dating, it was so different, so intentional, and that was all him. Like We had fun, but it was an intentional fun. And it was an intentional, you know, we're asking these questions, we're doing these things, we're putting one another in these scenarios to see how they respond so that we can know quickly whether or not they're someone we could marry. And then I think- Why would you want someone you could marry? Why is that the goal? Don't you think you deserve to have romance? To be head over heels for somebody? To fall in love with someone? Why do you think you need to find somebody who just meets the requirements? When we got to the point of deciding like, okay, I could definitely marry this person, we left it up to the Lord to reveal to us if that was in God's plan. And it was. Yeah, that's a good point. I got to the place where I was like, okay, I know this girl well enough to make a decision. There's no reason to keep dragging this out. I'm gonna seek the Lord to make sure that his blessing is on this, but there's no reason at this point to drag this out and go another four months, eight months, year of just dating the way we're dating. Ah, uh, make a decision, don't drag it out. I think that's my favorite romance novel. The next thing that I was thinking of when I was dating is if you guys have been following us for a while, you know that we were both virgins. We married as virgins and that was something I wanted, but I will say it wasn't a non-negotiable, but I just want to put this in here to say, don't, don't settle. Like if you want that, you, you go for that. Why do these people want this though? She goes on to say that it's not about being judgmental, but of course it is. They automatically value somebody less if they have had any sexual contact because of the strict purity culture that they live in. The concept of purity just makes people feel less than and like they are trash for what they do with their own body. Or it makes people feel like they are less than or like trash because of the abuse that they suffered in the past at the hands of somebody else. Your worth is not determined by whether or not you have touched private parts together with someone. Your worth is determined by how many Pokemon cards you have. You know, a baby conceived out of wedlock is still a bastard. What? Want me to say it again? Why did that come into your brain? Can I talk to you for a second? I watched our How We Met video. Mel gave me some really intense rules, both when we were friends and while we were dating. But they are so helpful to keep us pure until our marriage that we didn't even kiss until our wedding day. Yeah. All right, let's just jump right into it, babe. Why did we decide to put a whole video for hugging, babe? babe! starts off well let's start off with saying that when Paul and I first met Paul was very like <laughs> conservative and I was like hug me, hug me I went in for the high five <laughs> it was high fives and side hugs just give me a tiny side hug uh, um oh god okay um not like that uh, decent hug but do it silently now. we get to look back on it now and we have a clear picture of you know, what was... And I have a better understanding of where he was coming from, and I am more on his side now than I was. But I still am more laid back, I think, maybe. Okay, I get that, yes, sometimes boundaries are very important. But 
you can see over and over again how he just plays the I'm a holy man card to manipulate her into being who he thought she should be. She didn't want to get married right away. Actually, yes, she did. She just didn't know she did. She showed love with physical touch. Well, that means she's a sinner, and it's a good thing you fan such a holy man like me. I'm not sure I'm qualified to give relationship advice. You're not. Suburban seventh graders have more sexual experience than you do. Negotiable for me is the, the person I'm looking for has to have boundaries. Meaning, like, if I was dating Sutton and she's, like, trying to cross my boundaries or pressure me into being sexual or pressuring me into doing things that were going against my convictions, that would have been a game changer. You know, that would have been a no-no. So looking for someone who has boundaries, who will be there to stop you, you know, um, for her to say, I don't want to do that, or I uh, don't believe in lying, or I don't believe in cheating. You I know? don't believe in dating two girls at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that not everybody who's in a relationship should be going on the internet to give dating advice. I had this thought, I'm like, what do we, who are we to be talking to people about marriage? Like, you know, we've been married for three years. What do we know? We've been in many fights. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what do we know? And who are we to be telling people of like tips for a successful marriage? Then I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? I think that's Satan talking to me, telling me that we're not good enough, or we don't know enough, or we haven't been married long enough. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our thoughts aren't from Satan. Sometimes they're just our thoughts. And sometimes we should listen to our thoughts. That's why we didn't even want to kiss until our wedding day, because we didn't belong to one another yet. She belonged to Jesus, I belonged to Jesus, and we also know, especially for us who didn't live holy before knowing Jesus, that kissing can easily lead to more. So we put a boundary around that because we wanted to honor each other, and we wanted to honor the Lord and stay pure until that day. You don't belong to each other even after you are married. You don't belong to God ever. You should make decisions together about what you are comfortable with and what you enjoy, but not because you think it's what you're supposed to do, because an old book says it's what you're supposed to do. You should make those decisions based on your feelings for each other and what makes you feel safe and loved. And at the end of the day, this is what boundaries are all about. It's about giving up the temporary pleasures or the instant gratification of sin and temptation for the eternal pleasures in God that last forever. And we don't want you to think that it's just about keeping a bunch of rules and checking off the box. Or that it's legalistic, that you have to do all of these things perfect so that God still loves you. Because it's not. It's about walking with Jesus and wanting to love him by living pleasing to him in every area. That's the problem, isn't it? It's a bet with God. We give up joys here in hopes that maybe we get some joy after death. But why does the God of the universe care about what you're doing with your body? Doesn't he have bigger fish to fry? Aren't there kids with cancer he needs to ignore or genocides he's going to allow? Aren't there actual sex crimes that his pastors and priests are doing that he's supposed to help cover up? He is a busy, busy man. Why does he care what you do with your body? And we'll never, ever leave each other alone in the room with the wee lads. Yes. And I also think... Wait, what? Or the wee lasses. Whatever you're into, there's no judgment here. And of course, you know, if you do slip up, you go to a new parish, they sort the family out, have some chats, perhaps some money changes hands, perhaps not. No harm, no foul, you come back, you're grand. Uh, yeah, I'm gay. What are you talking about? Oh! No, I'm gay, that's it. I'm a gay man. You meet someone you like, and you start dating, okay? Yes. You go on that first date, how do you close it? Oh, I'm hugging is fine. You go in, you give him a nice big front hug. It was great seeing you today, Charlotte. Date number two goes around, it goes well. Good seeing you again, Charlotte. You pull him in closer, <laughs> it lasts longer. Um, and then you're this close to the person's face. 
Date number three. <laughs> Charlotte, it was, I had a blast with you tonight. Me too, Timmy. At the bowling alley and then ice cream afterwards. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> the hand starts slipping down a little bit. <laughs> do you guys, as funny as we are, <laughs> do you guys see what I'm saying? Guys, I know that it sounds crazy to talk about hugging. Like, what? It's just such an innocent thing. And it is. H a hug is so innocent, but it leads to other things. It can. <laughs> it's a gateway hug. So, you know, Paul was very, very set on saving sex before marriage. Before, before marriage. <laughs> and he was not going to cross any boundaries that could possibly even give him the thought would put sexual thoughts inside his brain. And Gateway hug, like gateway drug. So. And hugging, like, come on. Your chest is pressed up against the guy. Uh, his hands are on your lower back getting close to the bootay. And ladies, those are precious things in the front and the back. And guys, okay? they should be precious to you as well for later on. Yeah, and you need to decide who you're letting press up against you. They are told that they can't even think about it or act on their desires in any way. So they become these people who can't even hug someone without being a creep. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a crazy, yeah, stickler, but guys, this is real stuff, all right? I, looking back on it, like Morgan said, I was really conservative. I would have even been more conservative. And I could see some people are watching this being like, wow, Paul, you must have been pretty weak if you couldn't even hug a girl without having a sexual thought. Paul was so strong. Most of the time, I actually see people doing the very opposite. Most people are asking the question, how far can I go before it's actually sin? Like, where is that line that it's sin and how close to that line can I actually get? Yeah, because that's the boundary. I swim out to the little things that say don't go past this because that's the boundary. You're saying it's still not a sin, so what's the problem? When really, that is the completely wrong question to be asking. Instead, Ronnie and I wanted to ask, God, how holy can we stay? How pure and righteous can we live in our dating life in a way that pleases you? And that is the heart we want to have when it comes to establishing boundaries in our life and in our relationships. Wow. Good for you. The dating process is about evaluating the person that you're with. Is this the person that I want to be with for the rest of my life? And bringing it in sex, it complicates things and it clouds your evaluating process because sex creates this bond between you two. It's like been a scientific study that when, you're, when you have sex with someone, oxytocin is released into your body, which is a bonding chemical, and you're bonded to that person whether you like it or not. Uh, I love when they try to use science to prove their point. Yes, sex can be a bonding experience, but bonding doesn't necessarily mean that they are bonded for life. Fishing can be a bonding experience between heterosexual men and chemicals are released in their brain. It doesn't mean they are also tied for life. Scientifically, it's debated whether or not humans are even really meant to be monogamous. And practically, there is a spectrum of how people feel towards monogamy. There are polyamorous people, there are open relationships, there are people who only want to be with one person, there are people who don't want to be with any person. These people try to spiritualize sex and say that it causes something that they call soul ties. If the whole goal of the dating process is to figure out, is this girl, is this guy someone that I want to spend my entire life with, that's such a big decision. The last thing you want is to be throwing in things that's gonna cloud that decision, creating that soul tie bond that comes with that. So hold that part back, hold the sex back, because that is the part of the, your relationship that you're pretty much guaranteed is gonna work out. I mean, that's gonna, it's gonna be okay. If it's not, you'll figure it out. Well, sorry, that's not true. Many Christian couples really struggle in their relationships due to sexual problems. And for a lot of them, they never get through it and their marriage ends up in divorce. And by saying, you'll figure it out, it'll be fine, it shows that not only are they basing this on their own personal experience and have done no actual research, 
It has the added benefit of making people who watch their stuff feel like failures when it doesn't just work out for them. Now, this is how you can mess up your whole relationship, is by starting with the physical, mm -hmm. okay? Thinking mm -hmm. that it will get to spiritual. Mm -hmm. Physical will never take you to spiritual. Physical will take, take you to the demonic spiritual. Yeah. Because after that, you will get mm -hmm. soul ties, you will live in guilt. You can open doors to demons. Mm -hmm. You can really honestly destroy your, your yeah, relationship. Yeah. Because now, this is what you have to understand what physical does first. It's like putting super glue on that relationship. Yeah. Sex is a super glue. Okay? You don't play with super glue. You don't test super glue. Like, yeah. if you buy super glue, none of you will go in, like, yeah, let me, tr let me try that. Let me put that right now on my five fingers and let me just see if how strong this is. I mean, somebody's never met my old roommate. He did stuff like that all the time, multiple times. He also ate moldy spaghetti r regularly. Nobody in the right mind does that. You right away apply it where you want things to be permanently connected. Why? Because you know, you don't play around with super glue. Same thing with physical, with sex. You don't play around with that. The reason why is because sex is supposed to cement things supernaturally. Soul ties are not a thing. Okay, first of all, you have to establish that there is a spiritual world that includes demons. Oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love you, buddy. And you have to show that sex ties these souls together which isn't even in your own Bible. All the heroes of the Bible were sleeping around with everyone all the time, and God continued to bless them. With autonomy basically means coming from a place of morality rather than being led by your desires. Yes, which is a hard thing to do nowadays because I feel like now it's pretty common for people to want to live together, want to have sex with each other because people are like, oh, i got to test this out before I commit to marrying this person and they want to import like these certain responsibilities that come with marriage like living together and having sex but they're not wanting the commitment of marriage i'm always told that i have no moral compass without religion but i look at things like this and i realize that this is what lacking a moral compass actually is morality involves thinking things through and talking things through morality is about looking at the result of our actions on how it affects others morality can't exist if it can't be reevaluated and revisited a list of rules created to make sure that my baby is my baby so that i can give them my cows and my slaves isn't morality it's dogma I'm very concerned about this living situation. I mean, I've seen enough episodes of Friends to know that cohabitation leads to sex, drugs, and something Parade Magazine called Schwimmer Fatigue. Good for you, Shirley. What's the saying? If you can't stop them, judge them. Well, somebody's got to be this group's moral compass. And that somebody has to be you, right? Because by moral compass, you mean Shirley's religion. Yes, I get my philosophy from Britta. She used to live in New York. But it is the pressure of that commitment that propels you through the dating process. Because the goal, if you're at a point in your life where you want to get married, is to kind of like get through that dating process. You want to figure out, is this a good fit for me or not? And the way to do that is don't be living together. Don't be sleeping together because those are things meant for marriage. And if you're both giving each other that gift, then what's the point? Like, what's the excitement of getting married? I just feel like it... It just really elongates the process of you. I mean, if you're wanting to get married, it really stretches it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Better to marry than to burn with passion. That's in the Bible. Maybe for most people, marriage isn't just about sexy time. It's about going through life with their person. It's not about finding someone who fits a criteria and marrying quickly because you aren't allowed to do sex without it. It's about love and it's about showing commitment. This way is robotic and lacking love and usually ends in disaster. When I was in Bible college, I worked at the school newspaper for a bit. I did a fake advice column where I would give the worst advice possible. Kind of like these people, but ironically. But while I was there, somebody started a column where every month they would give a list of students who had gotten engaged that month. A friend then wrote an opinion piece on that column and asked if we would also be publishing a list of all the Bible college students who have gotten divorces. A lot of people were really upset by her article, 
but she was so right. There is a reason these channels are always very young couples who haven't been married long giving this advice. So many people who date this way or get married this way don't stay married very long because they simply lack the understanding of what it means to be in a partnership. But Trevor, you're a 42-year-old single dude. What do you know? I've been in more wedding parties than I can count, and I've seen most of those marriages end. When you put sex on this pedestal, when you deny your own human desires, then you emphasize marriage as something you have to do on a certain timeline while also not properly preparing people for what marriage really is. You set people up for heartbreak. You set people up for financial ruin. You set people up to miss out on finding a relationship that they would have actually wanted to be part of. Dating and marriage doesn't have to be a chore. You are allowed to enjoy your life. You are allowed to see where it goes while you're getting to know somebody. And you're allowed to not get married ever if you don't want to. You're allowed to marry the person that you want to marry, as long as it's somebody who also wants to marry you. Thing is going to be totally. Fu- Sorry. Um, are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. All right. Then it's a date. Be careful who you take advice from. Love who you love. Bang who you want to bang. As long as there is enthusiastic consent, be safe, have fun. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for making it this far. If you know somebody who may benefit from it, send it their way. Thank you all for being awesome. Thank you for being lovely. Thank you for being just the wonderful. Would you all like to marry me? Work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs>